Hello and welcome to the Wednesday week. We've not got food with us tonight. The usual host, I don't know whether having his teeth whitened, jaw widened, or just face face re- reattached. I don't know what, what he's having done now, but <laughs> facial reconstruction. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna turn up as Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> or John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for John Travolta. <laughs> well, that is the best start that we've ever had to a Wednesday week. You've got me asking you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm joined by Stevie, Simon and Blair. How are we all? Very good, good mate. Good, thanks. <laughs> good stuff, right. Um, at the risk of just laughing at the way through the <laughs> um, we'll... Well, we're all happy because it's all going well at the moment. Um, and we'll start with MK Dons, which went very well, Steve. Um, we'll start with the first goal, seeing as it, it all come pretty sharpish. I don't think much happened before that, except for the save um, from, from Lee Gregory that led to the first goal. Good start. It was a great start. I don't think we could have asked for any anything uh, or a better start to, to a game that was a, a, a massive pressure game. Um you know, at this stage of the season, going there, it's one of those when people are starting to look at the home form versus our away form. And obviously, Hillsborough's a little bit of a fortress um, at the moment, isn't it? And I know that the, the stats are doing the round. So to go to, to MK Dons and, and make the start that we did against one of the two form teams, I think they were unbeaten in 15 at the time, weren't they? Um, you know, to go out there, um, I, I think we started on the front foot. We looked positive. Um, the build-up, play to the corner, the, the ball over the top for Gregory, uh, or through the, 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 the ball through for Gregory for him to take the shot that the keeper turned around, I thought was, was spot on. Um, and then it was a weird one, wasn't it? Because although we scored early, but it almost felt like there was a delay. I don't know about anybody else, because I know we were all there. There was a delay in the reaction, because at first you thought the keeper had saved it. Mm. Um, but once, obviously, that you'd seen the goal, it, it kind of a ripple effect had come across the, the Wednesday fans. And, and in unison, we were all up out of seats. Well, we were anyway. But um, it, it, it was just the best start possible for me. Um, you, you look at the way that the corner's been worked, and I've watched it back again um, a, a couple of times. I thought, I thought the build-up play was, was as good as you could expect to see. Um, obviously, worked on it hard at the, on, the, on the training ground. And if you watch Berahino's movement to create the space, he's... He's screened by um, Gregory on, right on the far stick, and they're doing all the the sort of the one twos at the near post. It's actually when the ball goes back is the is the catalyst for Ber- Berahino to pull off um, for for Bannon to lay the ball into him. There was it was one hundred percent worked. It was one hundred percent practiced, and you know I, I, I thought given the the balance of play in the very early stages of the game, it was absolutely the right thing to 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 happen. Yeah, and I think on that, you've got one chance to to have something like that come off when you, you're trying to corner like that. We tried something similar, if you remember, in the second half against Rotherham. But for some reason, we're, the only thing, well, a couple of differences, we didn't play the first pass and bounce it back into Bannon. And secondly, for some reason, it was Jack Hunt on the end of it, on the edge of the box, which, which, which I don't know why that was the case. But yeah, th- this one did go much better. And... Yeah, I, I don't know about you lot. I mean, we were in the bot, I were in the bottom tier, and we thought that the the shot from Gregory was in until everybody stopped cheering, but didn't realise that the goal was in until everybody did. I mean, the the save Simon to start with for, from from the Gregory one was pretty incredible. To me, He's t- some say Gregory should score and possibly should, but I think it's you just got credit to save, but. But Barry, you know, we, we've we've talked about him quite a lot recently. I think that was probably his best game of the lot. In the yeah, without without a doubt. I mean, absolutely right. I agree with Steve. When when we scored, there was silence, and it wasn't really until the players started running away from the goal that we actually realised that we'd scored. There, there, it, it was almost a mute of silence, and then all of a sudden, pandemonium as after we'd scored. Um, and 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 because obviously it was at the opposite end of the pitch, we were all who scored, who scored, because we weren't quite sure who who'd scored it. No, it wasn't quite. I mean, looking back on the goal, it was a great goal, wasn't it? A great goal from Berahino. I mean, he he play, he, he he put it between their defenders straight into back in that superb, well taken corner. But yeah, there was a delay, which was a bit weird, and then just we all went mental, you know, because I think 
expectations were, you know, they've been playing so well recently and, and we thought it'd be a tight game. And, and we'll talk about the second half in a bit, but, you know, it, 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 we, it was a good, really good, I think for a Sky game on a Saturday night, League One, for, for an impartial, impartial viewer, I think it would, would have been a really, really good game to watch. Yeah, I think, that, I mean, I pre- I'm not saying I predicted it, but I did pretty much predict it all. Um, so you aren't saying you predicted it. I absolutely have money with it all. I said before game, just before game, I said, I think something special is going to happen tonight. And on podcast yeah. before, I said it was going to be 3 2. And it all pretty much happened. And it just made, like we say, we, we had to win that one, more so, even more so because we knew going into it that everybody else had won the day before Blair. And I think it, that made it a bit, it was, it was like a playoff game to me. I don't know what you thought. Oh, 100%. Um, I think as soon as I saw MK on the pitch, I thought we're going to have these today. So I really just thought, if we can't play our football on that pitch, it's something not right. It wasn't like we were going out to like Wimbledon or Cambridge and a really tight, small, wobbly pitch. It was immaculate, really. I thought their stadium was great, to be honest. Um, I, yeah, I was um, sceptical at first. Cause I, I thought playing late, I thought I was going to put too much pressure on us. And judging by this season, I think our team can be, well, over the past few weeks, we've been proven wrong completely. But I thought we've been. Be um, but but yeah, buckle under pressure. That's what I'm trying to get at. Sometimes, like Shrewsbury away, I can't, I can't get it out of my brain just how bad that were. I really just thought that they were going to bottle it under this pressure. But when I saw that pitch, I really thought, yeah, we can get we can get at least today. And it's funny when you see this bit on about the 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 delay on the um, <laughs> like my voice, the delay of the celebration because I was like literally on the first row, so I couldn't see the fucking the, the, anything going in. Um, I'll tell you something. Um, when, when, when watching it back, seeing the goalkeeper, like when he made the first save of the Gregory save, when the Bayers danced through, and he, you know, the really good save by Gregory, he like the, their keeper, like had like sort of like, smug look on his face, like <laughs> you know, I'm here. I don't know if you've seen it back, like 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 he's like the best keeper in the world, and then like literally two seconds later, he's putting it in, he's literally palmed it into his own net. <laughs> So I like that. But yeah, it was like a playoff game, you're right. And I don't fancy playing them over two legs, to be honest, either. Just trying to avoid that. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think I think Bannon said it after the game, actually, that they were the best side that we've come up against. I think, mm. really, they're the two best sides in the division when they're playing like that, Wednesday and, and MK. I think they've got a really strong side. And we'll move on to the second goal. Another well-worked corner, Steve. It's slightly different. Um, a bit more direct this time. Story nearly got on the end of it, and, and Gregory come out in behind him and pops another one in. Yeah, I think for, for, for me, you look at levels and, and players that can play, and what sets. And I know we're talking about League One, and this is no disrespect to, to Lee Gregory or anybody at, at the club or anybody at that standard of football, but there are there are levels to the way that you play football, and that is a direct sort of or has a direct impact on how far you're going to go in the game. Um, Gregory isn't an academy product that's come through and has been coach, coach, coach from the age of 12 years old. Do you know what I mean? He's got to a level that he's playing at now because he's a very, very smart player. And I think the the, the second goal was testament to that because if you if you watch it back, you know, story's only maybe six inches away from nodding it in himself. But the fact that the ball has gone over his head and the, 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 the way that Gregory's reacted, he's followed it up expecting Story to miss the header. Do you know mm. what I mean? So, you know, other, other players, players that don't get to, to that sort of level of, of, of football, if you like, aren't, aren't likely to be able to do that. I thought the corner was spot on again. I thought the delivery was good. We've, we, we've, we've waxed lyrical on this podcast about the way that we put balls in the quality of delivery that we've got and how, how wasteful certain players can be. I've got no arguments with the, the, the delivery for, you know, from set pieces on Saturday. I thought they were all spot on uh, pretty much. I'm probably forgetting one or two now um, that, that didn't hit the spot. But I, I, I thought that, that corner was equally as good in terms of the way that it was worked. If you look at the way that they were stacked, you know, again, it was a routine that was planned. You've got that line, which makes it difficult for the players to be picked up, uh, creates that space. Story hits the front post. Gregory's got a yard and he's able to just, as we said, keeps his eye on the ball. It's everything that you'd expect somebody to be 
um, told what to do with their coach. But I just think at, at, at times as well, you know, smart players are ready and smart players that are switched on are going to get those goals. And that's why Gregory uh, was in the right place at the right time. He's, he's a different level, isn't he, Steve, in regards to... He is. Ability. He, he can just see, even when he's not scoring, he's a different level. What number is he? He's, no. he's our striker. <laughs> he's our number nine. <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm blank then in regards to what number he plays. He, he, <laughs> I, did, I, I thought you were going to say not nine because we've, we've had all sorts of shy playing number nine, haven't we? Since Thursday, no longer playing. the nine. I've not stopped singing his song since that night. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he is. He's a different gravy. He, he is a brilliant player. He's a great sign. The fact that we've actually signed him and he's not on loan is is a positive thing as well. <laughs> I actually think we've got. He's got another couple of seasons in him as well. He looked. He 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 ran his absolute heart out on Saturday night. He. Well, I think I think all the team did, but certainly him and Bannon basically covered. I love to see a heat map on those two in regards to the amount of grass that they covered on Saturday night because they were exceptional. Yeah, Bannon. Bannon's <laughs> fantastic. He? he charged. He closed everything down. Um, I'll wait until a minute. I'll, I'll, yeah, carry on. The point I want to make is in the second half regarding closing people yeah. down because that, that, that last 10 minutes is really pissing me off. <laughs> so. I think the, 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 the thing for me, just on Gregory, the thing for me is, as we said, he, he came into the game relatively late, didn't he? And there, yeah. are, there, are, there, are, there are players that have done that previously. You look at, um, and it seems to be a pattern of players that haven't been playing professional football as a teenager, they tend to have longer careers. You, yeah. know, you look at people like Vardy, you go way back, you look at people like Ian Wright, I don't think Ian Wright kicked the ball professionally until he was about 21 or 22. Yeah, Millwall. Years. Millwall picked him out of non-league, didn't they? I think so. I can't remember what team. Yeah. I've, I've got a brain tree in my head, but I'm probably going to be completely wrong. I'll just have a good I think on. Stuart Pearce was the same, wasn't he? Wasn't it Stuart Pearce yeah. the same? So, you know, and, and to, to that point, I, th- I just think he's a, he's a different level. And I think you can look at certain other players that we look... Halifax. If, Halifax. If, if, if you look at... Um, you look at the players that we've got. Darren Moore clearly likes to play a certain style of football. He's got a formation that he's going to stick to. And that points to the fact or it lends, uh, it, it creates that sort of discussion around whether or not he's got a plan B. And we've spoken about that quite recently as well. For me, he's got a first choice formation of the 3 5 2 or the 5 3 2, if you want to call it that. Um, and he puts what he perceives to be the right players for those positions in those positions. We can argue whether they're square pegs in round holes. Um, which we're probably going to do for, for, for the crew game. And I'm, I know that I've got different opinions on to, to certain other people about that. However, um, if you watch Gregory's play versus Patterson, Cambiri, it feels to me like we've got players like that that try and play the same way that Gregory does, but they always feel Gregory light because he just don't have that sort of ability to make the ball stick. Mm. When the ball's up in the air, you know, the goal kicks, uh, punts out from, from defence or whatever you always feel like there's at least half a chance that Gregory's going to get the ball up, he's going to stick. He gets in between the ball and the defender nice and early. Uh, he sets himself. He knows where that, that, that defender is when he's touched tight and he knows that how to set himself and put him in, himself in a position where we are as likely, if not more so, to retain the ball. Whereas if you watch Patterson, love Patterson to bits, he's an absolute maverick. Um, but he's not, he hasn't got the hold-up play that Gregory has. You look at Canberry, Canberry's arms and legs, he's all over the shot. Lee Gregory's on a different level to those two. He, he, I mean, I know Victoria was waxing lyrical last week about him being big. He's not actually that tall. He, he's quite square, but it's his ability to be able to physically get the ball without actually wrestling defenders to the floor and giving away fouls. And that, that is one of Patterson's issues, isn't he? He too easily gives a foul away. He's lost um, fouls away. Yeah. It, Gregory just has that amazing ability to be next to a centre back who's massive and win a ball off them without actually being physical with that player. He does it by reading where the ball's going to land. That's, and reading that's exactly it. It's, that's yeah. his intelligence. He sees yeah. the ball, he knows where the player is, he knows yeah. what needs to happen next. And yeah. it's interesting, um, you know, players that have played at that level, and I've, I've we played in the charity game um, that I'm playing again. In this year, just as a, a quick anecdote, I once played in a game against um, Chris Sutton, and Chris Sutton was playing uh, centre forward, and I was marking him. And I, as I've said before, I'm not a, 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 a 
sort of a technical football. I could edit, I could kick it, I could win my tackles. The ball's up in the air um, and it's coming. You can see it coming from a, a, a distance. And I thought, right, bread and butter this. I'm going to go and head this ball and I'm not going to have to chase Chris Sutton. And all he did, he just gave, he knew where to put himself. And at the last minute, just a little nudge. And, he, you know, there was no strength behind it. There was no force behind it. He just knew where the defender, where myself would be, or as a defender would need to be to just give him that little nudge that's going to knock him off balance. And Gregory's got that in abundance. I think he's, you know, just knowing how to play uh, against big physical defenders is something that other people can't do. How he didn't get sent off or booked for that tackle on Theo, I'll, I'll never know. But I think he got booked, didn't he? I'm sure he got. Did he, <laughs> did, he get booked, did he get booked for it? I don't think he did. Oh, I, I thought he was going to get sent off. Oh, that, was, that was putting a line in the sand to say to that Canadian, hang on, you ain't going to be doing any stepovers in this patch. Pal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, where, is, where he warmed up, I was bang next to him. And he looked up at, at 6,000 of us. And he sort of like did this. Like really like, I don't know if he meant, was he saying about his allegiance now as MK Dons and he was sort of having to go with us, but he sort of did it so like, like, like he had, in his brain, he was like, I'm going to be ready to be big and hard here doing this, like bang my chest. And I think he shat himself doing it, <laughs> <laughs> looking at all of us. And then he's, but obviously when he came on, his performance was absolutely ro- woeful, weren't it? It was. Yeah. It, it, right. was, it, was it Josh Windass's tweet? Josh Windass retweeted the, uh, the Bannon goal and Corbin who liked it. Oh, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get a Corbin here, but I want to forget all that. Oh, yeah. And Talk, talk about the third one. <laughs> Chinned it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I know we put, I think we put something out on social media. Is that up there with the best? That, that's the best I, I've seen live. I think it's probably the best I'm ever likely to see live. And I saw, I was, I saw Adam Reaches at Villa live. I saw Wallace's at Fulham live. I think Bannon beats it. I think I, I think Wallace's were top before, but I think Bannon beats it. Stevie? Mm, no argument from me, really. Um, you you probably had a better view than, than us in the lower tier. I was, I was bang behind it. I was bang yeah. behind it, and I was on the upper tier. Um, it was weird. It, it almost happened in slow motion, and yeah. the people around us, the ball, the, the, the keepers, sorry, the, the defenders headed it, and it's... It's gone to ban and he's chested it. And as it's bounced, I've, I'd, grabbed, my daughter, I've grabbed my daughter and gone, he's not doing that. And there are a couple of other people. You could, you could almost feel people going, he's going for it, you know. <laughs> 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 the moment, the moment, the we moment just... he left his foot, you could, you could feel people just yeah. waiting to scream. Yeah. Um, one of the best experiences to, to, to watch that with my daughter was absolutely brilliant. It, it... Um, I, I look, what I'd love to have seen would be a fan cam of a close-up of, of, of like all of us. Because yeah. I, I, I could see myself, and especially looking back at it, <laughs> I, was like, I was like Del Boy and Rodney when they're selling watch. <laughs> and and, and it, it, we'll start the bidding at 250 and it's not £250, it's £250,000. <laughs> 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 just we, no, Joe we, drops, and I, 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 I think I even said, uh, and probably you, you like the same way. Oh, go on then, thinking it's gonna have a go. It's lined it up, but it, it's gonna go over. It's go. It's gonna stray off wide, and I thought it was gonna land on top of the net. I know I could see keeper was struggling, but I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna, it, it's over top. And then when it dips, and you just saw it stick it back at net. We we were just we were chastising Peacock Farrell because he'd had a few wasteful kicks, mm. and the ball had come out to him and he'd lumped it and he'd he'd, he'd put too much on it, and he were nowhere near any of players. And I'm like, <laughs> and Ethan said to me, "Oh God, he's gone and done it again, Dad." And then Bannon hit it. And <laughs> do you remember that season where Wallace had scored that worldie, and then and then I can't remember who else at Reach had scored one, and the. the, the there was one where somebody scored and they were saying, oh, it were offside. And Forestieri yeah, got off. his hands on his head doing that. It would play and off. As, it, as it was dropping, me and Ethan just looked at each other and went like that. Because it was like, no, no. And then the net, and again, we were just all, we celebrated, but we're all celebrated in absolute yeah, shock it was, yeah. and awe. It was just, what the flipping heck has <laughs> happened? And we've just witnessed that. 
And there was, um, there was a video of it, and actually Gregory is celebrating yeah. his hands up before it drops yeah. in the net. He, again, footballing brain, he knew it was in. <laughs> that, 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 that is the best angle of the goal, because you can see all 11 players, and you see, you see different reactions. Ali Dean just goes like that. Berino does something similar. Byers can't believe... Palmer starts running before it goes in back at net, to be fair to him. Palmer can see it somehow from left-back, where it's going. Oh, wow! Palmer sees everything. It, 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 it'll be a, it's a goal that we were we were in the lower tier, a little bit to the left of the goal, and and there won't be many goals. I saw I saw Waddle score at, at, at Wembley. I, I saw the reach two of the reach goals to the two different Villa games. You know, we've I was at uh, Norwich when when Forestieri scored that amazing goal, and I can't. I know we we tweeted, didn't we? Uh, you know which one's the best goal? I, um, I think I think he's up there with them. There's a I whole think, row of them. I don't think we can pick. What I he's think doing. sometimes the, the the what the game makes the goal better as well because that was an important game and to score it, that it, sort it, of goal it, in it, that it, game. When he scores that, it's not quite as special, is it? Well, no. I mean, like the Norwich one, for example, with Forest is unbelievable, but we were nowhere near then. That was like a on the beach sort of game, weren't it? From from what I remember, it was a nothing. It was a nothing game. As this was a proper game, where we had to win. They had to win as well to get to get you know, for, for, for Rotherham. And then so it, it sort of makes like the, the explosion of celebration even more impactful. But it really just reminded me of why I love football and why I love going to yeah, football. Absolutely, that feeling is unbelievable. And if you could bottle that, you'd be you know what I mean you'd have more money than Elon Musk, wouldn't you? <laughs> because like, it is the best feeling you'll ever ever feel in your life. You could buy you could buy Twitter, couldn't we? Yeah, that's so, so, the, uh, the, the the podcast title tonight: more money than Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> so we're three 0 up. It's all looking fairly rosy, and I think we're all saying, right, all right, and three <clears throat> three nil half time, and we'll be satisfied. But we couldn't even do that, <laughs> which, 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 which meant that half time couldn't be enjoyed. I, not, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> a lot, a lot of people did. I couldn't. I, I just sat there because I, I thought, well, I think I think the scenes. You know how um, Blair said earlier on, it, it was like the, the the atmosphere was like a playoff game. It felt like that from the very start. It was a, a lovely sunny sunny day, wasn't it? It'd been a nice warm sunny day. I know we'd all sort of travelled down during the day. And it did have that bit of a feel about a playoff game about it. Um, but they were certainly partying at half time, mate. Trust me, just behind <laughs> us on the concourse, it was absolutely mental. They were, but there was that apprehension, I think is the word, uh, of what might happen in the second half. And I think the have it to take Harley Dean off and bringing the certain oh. player on. And I, do, I don't want to get on at him too much, but. I, I think it was we went into the second half and again Shea Dunkley might have misplaced an edit and I grabbed my mate I said all I want him to do is edit like Stevie said edit kick it and give it to someone else who can play and he was struggling yeah. to even edit straight which Baz, Baz screamed at him as well for letting the ball bounce for the first goal that, oh. that's what I said I, 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 <laughs> Stevie you're the centre half it, it, it's a difficult he can't really put the head, the actual header, anywhere else once he's late bounce. But he shouldn't be letting that bounce for me. No, no it's first rule, isn't it? First rule. I, I, I think first and foremost, I think for, for you, you can look at the possession stats, you can look at the score line. Um, I think all of that, if I'm honest with you, on balance of that first half until Dean went off, I think the outcome in the end is actually flat at MK Dons because I think at three 0 Dean stays on. I think it's a much more assured and controlled game at the back. Yeah. I don't think, as we said, I don't think that ball bounces. Um, I don't think Story, and I know that we're, we're talking about Dunkley. Um, if, you, if you watch the goal back, Story's out of position as well, to be fair. Um, he, he's tucked and deep instead of being out wider, uh, where I think it was Parrot, wasn't it, um, that, that, that went in and scored. Um, you know, if, if Dean stays on the pitch, that doesn't happen for me first and foremost. But I think to, to the point around Dunkley, I, I feel a little bit for him because having been that kind of player, you you know that there are 
players that are technically better than you and there's a style of play that is being played. And for, for me personally, Dunkley doesn't fit that. And that's no disrespect to the man because he's a professional footballer. Um, and what he does well, he does well. And, and, and I, and, you know, for that, I, I like the guy. But, you know, he, he's come onto the pitch at 3-0 up and we're playing a free-flowing style of football and we were controlling the game. I don't care what anybody says, even at 3-0, they might have got had, had the odd, odd opportunity. They had the couple of break breaking breaks down the, uh, the 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 channel on the right hand side that we were sort of nullifying. But um, it felt to me like Dunkley's come onto the pitch and was just trying too hard to be something that he wasn't, and the, that the, became the issue. I think the problem uh, we've got, Steve, is our defence has moved on, hasn't it? Yeah, our defence has moved on. I, it's not necessarily. A hundred percent understand what you're saying, but I don't. I think what, you, the, what you're saying there is we've got players that can actually go and play. We've got mm -hmm. players that are going to go and get the ball down. We've got players that are going to communicate and say, right, we're not going to panic when we've got somebody running at us on the halfway line. We're not going to um, worry about that ball that's coming. We are going to go and trust the people either side of us and go and head the ball rather than letting it bounce. And I just think, I don't know if it's because he'd only just come on, because it was literally his first touch, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pretty much his first touch. So he's gone and... He, you're right, Ben. He couldn't really done anything else with it because all the power in the ball, all the pace in the ball had gone. So he's gone and headed it. Fair enough, it's gone where it's gone. And they've they, you know, they've broken and scored from it. Um, but if he doesn't let it bounce and if you know he's in a, a, a better position, that doesn't happen. If we go into half-time at 3-0, I think it's a much more comfortable second half. Yeah, so really, we, we were waiting then to, to concede the second, really. We didn't really show anything in the second half it was just all out for as long as possible and fortunately we managed to hold out while 95 because I think if we'd have conceded another 10 minutes earlier we might have been looking oh, a bit that one, what, that one that hit the post yeah <laughs> if, if that goes in it, it could have quite easily been a completely different outcome for me but it more, was more be getting sacked <laughs> especially, <laughs> on, especially on Twitter <laughs> and um, and and uh, Again, in terms of MK Don Scott Twine, he's player with the he's player with the season contender alongside Bannon and uh, and Smith. I think that's over between Bannon and Twine, sorry, because I think they're both pretty levels above this division, to be honest. Um, one mention that I think should be mentioned: Deli Bashiru. I thought he I thought he was man of the, except for Bannon having the game that he had. Uh, I don't know what you think, Blair, but I thought Deli Bashiru were probably man of the match for me. Oh, yeah, brilliant, wasn't he? Mm. It was like a young Yaya Torre. That, that's what he's got in him, though. I, I, <laughs> I said it earlier this season. You feel like you have to wind him up a bit to get him going. But... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, tongue in cheek, obviously. If he, I mean, if he gets as good as Yaya, I mean, but, but yeah, it, it, that's what it reminded me of. Do you know what I mean? He, he just, he just, as soon as he had that ball, just he just ran forward with it, and it's 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 so refreshing to see a, a, our player do it because defenders hate being ran at, don't they? It's simple as. He, I mean, he's his ability to get the ball and run through, players were literally bouncing off him. Yeah, really. literally, yeah. yeah. It, 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 incredible, incredible player for, for, for a, a young lad. We keep saying, I mean, he is only still a young lad. I mean, I think Gary Monk signed him. Oh, no. I think yeah, Gary it was Monk. It was Monk. It was Monk, yeah. And I think he's still raw, but I think we've got the right manager to bring him through. Um, and, yeah, he was superb. Because I think we all looked at the team sheet at the start, saw, saw, saw Luongo wasn't inside, and I think a few, a few of us sort of our hearts dropped. But obviously he was, he was ill, I think, wasn't he? Um, so, so yeah, we, we didn't miss uh, Mass, and and he came in and did a fantastic job. That Fear, just, that, fear. That, let's just talk about Theo for two seconds. Yeah, because well, well, the the way I described it was Theo Corbin New Alcock. <laughs> He's a massive cock, tell you. <laughs> oh. Johnson, Johnson chopping him twice just to start off with was unbelievable. And then to knock him off the pitch <laughs> later, about five minutes later. And then when he, and then when he ran off the pitch, you know, he took it round someone, it might have been Johnson, but he ran off the pitch with the ball. He just had the absolute worst, probably the worst game I've seen a winger ever have. And I've seen a lot of wingers have bad games at Chevy West. Did we not? Did Gregory not get booked for for tackling him? And Johnson get booked for tackling him? And then did he not get booked for tackling Johnson? Yeah, I think, all I think within that, about five yeah. minutes. Yeah, 
something yeah. happened in training, didn't they? That he didn't leave. You can tell us. You can tell there's a bad blood left behind, especially with Gregory absolutely rent for him. I mean, Gregory looked like he could try to break his leg. <laughs> and he's actually him from behind. I was still on pitch. I've got no idea, to be honest. I think he was just trying too hard in the end. I, I think it were it were all getting a bit too much for him. Right, that's a good three points. Then we move on to Crew Tuesday night. We'll start with we've gone from probably the best goal we've ever seen. Have we seen the worst miss that we've ever seen at Hillsborough Stadium? Christ Almighty, I've seen. It. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> um, again, it's 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 one of those sliding doors moments, isn't it? If if Berrino scores that first one, um, it would have been four or five. Yeah, yeah. within fifteen yeah, twenty minutes, it, you know, it, it's a totally different game. Yeah. Um, I actually think, and I'm 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 the one. I'm the I think I'm the podcast member. Me and Ben tend to be the. Um, the, the the glass is half full rather than the glass is half empty. There's a there's a distinct line um, that that we stand or some of us sit either side of. Whereas some of us are very much optimistic and some of us are very much pessimistic. Um, I had no concern about the lineup. Um, whilst it was frustrating, it was a frustrating watch. I think at this stage of the season, the crew game, um, three points was the priority. I think we've we've got to temper our um, expectations a little bit because I think after Saturday everybody's walked into us but Tuesday night expecting double figures I think that, that that lent a little bit to the negativity that we had on the pitch after uh, sorry on, on social media after the game on, on Tuesday um, if you'd have offered us Friday night Saturday morning if, if you'd have offered us six points out of six and the results going the way that they'd gone um, elsewhere it could have gone any better could it? it couldn't have everybody no. would have hit their hands off um, you know, to, 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 to get the outcomes that happened and to, for us to be where we are now um, w- w- was massive. And the miss was terrible. It was. Um, and there were a couple of others where there was one that was cleared off the line that I, I just thought, put your, put your foot through it. And he's, he sort of tapped it. <laughs> um, I almost wonder if people would argue that Patterson's miss in the second half was as bad as Barrino's. In Without the, a doubt. The far stick. Um, so we were we were... We were wasteful in front of goal, you know, and that, that pause in play seemed to be where the goalkeeper's gone down injured, right. seemed to be the point at which they've regrouped. And then, you know, they, that was the moment where it was it was a watershed moment where they changed their game plan entirely. They, they turned changed the formation. Down. They changed the formation and everything, didn't they, Steve? They, 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 they turned up Tuesday nights to try and play football. Yeah, yeah they I'll, did. I'll say all day long, anybody, uh, whether it be Crew, MK Dons, Wickham, Rotherham, you come and try and out football us at Hills, where you'll get absolutely yeah, done. Yeah. That will happen, yeah. and they realise that, and that's when everything changed. Yeah, that that, that moment because I think I think Berahino <laughs> missed two. I think Gregory missed one, um, and and we were like, well, this is going to be. I, I'm I'm with Blair in regards to if we got if if Berahino put that one away, I think we would have won that five six nil. I yeah. think we would have just steamrolled them. I agree. I agree. And, and and then when the goalkeeper went down with what looked like a life threatening injury. And would never play again. <laughs> they all came over to the to their bench, didn't they? And and Wednesday players did too. And they went from attacking side to sitting everybody behind the ball. And um and that's then when they played the sort of football that's very difficult to break down. And I was one of those who came out of the game very frustrated and felt felt deflated after the game. But then sleeping on it, waking up the next day thought a bit bit about it and and I and and I went on to what you're thinking Steve is it was a horrible 1-0 win that game it didn't bother me at ago, all that game 3 or 4 months ago would have either lost or drawn and and we we got we got the win and and that's what we needed and and it doesn't matter you know it it, it was a dirty horrible played win and we did it and 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 that's all I want now is three points on the board. I think it'd be different. Uh, we'll talk about obviously Saturday in a, in a bit, but they they were. I agree entirely. If you play football against Wednesday, we you we will be better than you, and we will win. What's your thoughts on Mendes Lang? You see, the the first half, I I didn't think he were offering himself as an option enough. No. In half, it opened up a bit more to him, and that's where he started getting at peace. It doesn't stick to him at all, does it? Uh, you know, when he's playing up front, 
He just don't. He just doesn't stick. I mean, he, he weren't playing up front, was he? Playing right back, wasn't he? Uh, I just thought. That, I don't know where we were playing actually. He was playing all left wing back. He was playing left wing back, wasn't yeah. he? Ah, oh, yeah, that's it. Johnson is a centre back, wasn't he? I think the the, the problem the 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 Mendes Lang situation isn't helped by the fact that we play Johnson at centre back. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think playing Marvin Johnson as a left sided centre half and playing Mendes Lang because Marvin Johnson inherently, well, we we talked about it when almost the other way, didn't we? When when Mendes Lang plays up front. He migrates out to the left hand side where Johnson is. When Mendes Lang is out on the left hand side, Johnson plays from centre half and goes and occupies the spaces that Mendes yeah. Lang wants to. It feels like he's shoehorning him in the in the team though, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't work. If if we'd have played part, if Dean had been fit and we'd have played Palmer at um, left centre back, and for whatever reason Johnson wasn't playing, I think uh, Mendes Lang has a different game. I really. He's agree. clearly one of Moore's guys. He loves him. Moore loves Mendes Lang. I find him very frustrating because he might he seems really lazy and then like for the penalty, it just explodes out of nowhere and next minute he's in your, in the in the opposite box. You're like, how have you just done that when you just put him in put him in close the ball five yards down earlier? Yeah. Uh, like, so yeah, I that, find him frustrating, but he's obviously got a bit of talent behind him, hasn't he? That's what I felt in the, the first half. He had a chance to break away, I think, from a crew corner. He had a chance to break away on the south stand. Yeah, yeah. One on one. And he didn't have that confidence to to stand him up and go at him, but they should like but like you said, Blaze, show that in the second half. Mm. Where he's got someone one on one on one, and he he, he charges into the box, but he, he just didn't seem to have confidence to do it sort of from half halfway to try and get into into the opposition. Aren't Dom Alson said he was man at match, but he definitely wasn't man at match. <laughs> definitely not man at uh, match. Man at match. Piss off. Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on man of match. For me, George Byers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Of the crew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steve? Uh, why not? <laughs> you know what? Just a story had a good game. Story, <laughs> story get, oh, gets overlooked a lot, but Byers, Byers to me has been brilliant since he's started playing for us. Story is like an unsung hero, isn't he? Ever since he's joined. Do you know what I mean? He gets no plot, it's nothing, but he just he, it's like eight out of ten every game with him. Yeah. What I, Ryan Lowe didn't see, I've got no idea. No, <laughs> I, I I agree, Simon. I think story was he, he, he uh, had a great game because there were there were a wait, man Mandarin up top for, for crew, he didn't really have a sniff with story. Big lad, yeah, it was twelve, number twelve, yeah. Yeah, yeah. player in. I thought he was yeah. Good. yeah, he was. Yeah. They were all right, actually. I think. I think they, they, they gave us a game, but they, they obviously had a dictate to try and sit back. I mean, some of the time wasting was bloody They were ridiculous. terrible, though. What, can, I, can I have a special mention to their goalkeeper? You know, we mentioned, you mentioned earlier on, Blair, about, about the MK Don's goalkeeper having that <laughs> yeah. smug look on his face. Yeah. was when we got the penalty. Um, oh, yeah. He, he was this... Jersey dude, eh? <laughs> and the fact that that Gregory he, then he went to the, to his left and Gregory put it to the right. I just love that he was giving it all this and then just completely didn't. Gregory just yeah, what well, you can do, what you want, pal. <laughs> it's a funny one because the performance and the result um, two months ago I'd have been like mad. You know what I mean, you know, it's a crap one nil result. You know, I mean, even though one you wouldn't be happy with it, but now this start of the season, not bothered. Job done. Three points. Move on. What what Stevie? What did you think about? Gregory taking the penalty rather than Bannon. Did you feel a bit more relaxed about that? Um, yes. I had to think about that. I, I, I did. Um, I felt, if I'm honest with you, I felt it was a pressure penalty given that they'd sat in and frustrated us. Um, and it was nil-nil. And obviously, as it transpired, it, it ended up being the winning goal. I thought there was a lot of pressure on that penalty. And for all the histrionics that the, the, the goalkeeper was, was giving... Um, Obviously, that adds to it, doesn't it? And, you know, I, I thought it was cool. He was calm. Um, I think it was. It, it's the right thing to do. Gregory's our talismanic goal scorer, isn't he, at the end of the day? Um, I think it curries favour to an extent with the fans in that Bannon isn't the every corner, every throw in, every free kick penalties job lot. Uh, I think, I don't know if it's it's been a bit of a, I don't know if it was a wrench for Bannon to just say, right, OK, there's somebody else that's better placed to take the penalty for us. But I think overall it was it was absolutely the right thing to do. And that's obviously where it is in terms of him getting the goal that's that's got us the three points. 
Yeah, I looked at his, his goal reel when he was at Millwall last time he was in League One. He got, he got 18 goals last time he was in League One, Gregory. When we signed him. And um, a lot of him were pens. So I was, I was fine when he, took, when he stepped up. Yeah. He took it well. He took it really well. Yeah. yeah. He did, yeah. I, I like a striker taking a pen. I don't know I'd more done. He does now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just in general, do you know what I mean? In the Premier League, yeah, all sorts yeah. strikers don't seem to set pens anymore. It's a bit weird. Yeah. Well, that was crew wrapped up. That's another three points. Results again going for us somewhat, rather than losing to Burton. MK Dons losing to Oxford late on. Can we get top two? Can we get top two? I think we can get top two. I just. <clears throat> I don't think it's as nailed on as was it ten years ago, uh, whenever it was when we when we beat you know to the top. Two. Same situation, four points behind. Three. I, think I just think there's the pack. The pack is a lot closer than it was in. I've not looked at what it was ten years ago, but I just think there's some really really good form teams in there. MK Dons are good. We've got Sunderland in there. They're looking good. I think the only team that have got to start worrying, and I know they're our neighbours and they don't like us very much, is Rotherham. Because they just seem to be on a massive spiral downhill well, you, spiral. You, you see, I, I, looking at the different things that can happen, MK Dons have got more. Limitations. Yeah, MK Dons, got, <laughs> MK Dons have got Morecambe on Saturday. They can yeah. win that and draw with Plymouth if if that's what they want to do. Plymouth haven't conceded a goal at home in about 11 hours of football now. They can They can get four points from their last two if they want to. If we win all our games, we'll go above them. Rotherham, meanwhile, need to... Uh, they, they can... They, they have to be either op, op, uh, Oxford? Oxford and Sunderland, didn't they? Sunderland as well, haven't they? Oxford, Sunderland or Gillingham. They, they, they have, got were a pretty sh- poor running, really. They, they, they need to win one of those... And I believe even if they do win one of those, if they lose the other two and we win our games, we end up on more points than Rotherham. It's all getting a bit close. So Wickham have Wickham have Wickham got to win on Saturday against us to keep in Well no, if um, if we beat Wickham on Saturday, we are securing the playoffs. If Akin Fenwa hadn't scored the equaliser on Monday, um mm-hmm. I am I right in thinking we'd have needed a point on Saturday to secure right. the right. The thing that really annoys me is the um the reason the reason I picked this one out is just because you can pick out loads of results, but just the Peacock foul dropping the ball at Ipswich. Because that's such an avoidable mistake. Where you'd, any keeper at nine times out of ten smashes it down the pitch at ninety third minute. There's a there's a it would be an eight, 81, 81 points would be on if that didn't happen. There's a, series, there's a series of games that I think we can look back on and say... Yeah, I know. But with that one, I'll just think that is just a, yeah. a, a ridiculous mistake. It, it wasn't like a, a ricochet off, by bounce off someone's arse yeah. into, into the path yeah. of the strike. It's just a keeper, ball in his hands, drops it. I mean, what the, you know what I mean? What is he doing? Just get rid of it. It's like 90th minute. Just yeah. get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. we'd, be, we'd be on 81 points then. If we are on 81 points, I'd be really confident to get a second. But... I find it really hard to glow in football until until May fifth or whatever. Yeah, you know, after the season's finished, because it, it bites you on the ass but nine times out of ten done it football. So what would be nice is to get three points on on Saturday and cement our place in the playoffs. It'd be a really tough game. But I, 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 if if Wickham have got to get a, get a result out of it, they've got to come and attack us. Mm. So and that plays into our strengths really really well. Doesn't yeah. it doesn't because I don't think we, with our formation we don't have much width, do we? Um, because I, I don't like this three five two. There's, there's no you don't have wingers that you up like set up top of the pitch. Obviously, your wing backs are your width, but they're normally mm. defending as well. Mm. And I just, I mean, you saw MK Dons did it to us so many times against in that second half. A, a, a little ball just in between both centre backs, and then they're the, they're, they're two wingers. Always on top. I, we really need to get a winger if we're going to, if we're going to play that. So you need width if, if they're, cause they're going to be compact and if they come on it, come on us. We just haven't got enough. He's, he'll play Mendes line. He's got to. He's got to run on to loose balls into corners. He's got to do it. Steve, I'm not sure. Yeah. 
Do you know what? I'm, I'm not sure he will. I'm, I'm, I think he'll go to his, I think for me, he's got to go to his strongest 11. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. dare I say it, as good as, and I, I, I like Mendes Lang when he's on, on it, he's on it, but I don't think he's been right since he went off at Rotherham. No. Um, yeah, no. For me, for me um, and I'm not, <laughs> go back to the start of the season, I, I think I put something out about, and I don't really care about predicting lineups or anything like that. That's not what I'm about. What I am about is, I'll, I'll make a judgment based on what Moore does at two o'clock on a Saturday and I'll go, I'm happy with that or I'm not. Um, I, I, I know now, as it is recording Thursday night, that I wouldn't necessarily be happy watching Mendes Lang and Johnson in that team. Mm. And Johnson's in the conversation for the, you know, for, the, for the player of the season. You can't drop Johnson at the moment. Mm. And I think Hunt's been excellent. Um, if everybody's fit and firing in that middle three, Luongo, Bannon, Byers... Um, I, th I think they go in. I'm not overly concerned if we have to play Deli Bashiru based on last Saturday. Um, I actually think Deli Bashiru might be a, a, a decent option because Wickham has set up. They're going to be quite physical, aren't they? Mm. Um, and he, he offers something. Um, Berahino, Gregory up top. I think the headaches to, to be had are, are the back three based yeah. on whether we get Dean in. Story will be fine. I thought Palmer was is bang on. Joke, joking aside, Palmer was seven out of ten the, yeah. um, the, over the last couple of games, and that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get a man of the match performance out of John uh, out of Palmer. You'll get him being steady away. He, he might drop a bollock here and there. Um, he doesn't cost us goals uh, historically. Um, he makes up for the mistakes that he does make. Um, I'm, I've no problem with that. It's just that the untold quality, uh, 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 the untold sort of issue of who the the third centre half is going to be for me. No, I really hope Dean's fit. Yeah. Well, even Hutchinson, even Hutchinson, just you know, do. Um, is there any, you, what's you, been you, said about him? Has anybody, has anything been in the media about his injury? What, what it was, what it is? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, you've even got Lewis Gibson coming back. Yeah. Well, Gibson was on the bench the other night, wasn't he? He it's was. Just about how much fit he is. If he's anywhere there or thereabouts, I wouldn't be overly concerned about that. Um, the Dean one, um, I've seen this weird conspiracy theory concussion thing. I don't know where that's come from. Um, if you watch the lads come over on Saturday um, as they're doing the the celebrate the old laser celebration at the end, Dean was there with them. I don't know if he you was. Saw that. Yeah, he's he's there in his flip flops. He was hobbling about like you won't believe. So it looks to me like he's got some sort of calf strain or yeah. muscle injury in one of the legs. Um, yeah. he, he didn't look right at all. My worry is if that is the case, the way that he was after the game on Saturday, I don't think he will be right, to be no. honest. No. I, I, I honestly think that we'll get, and this is me being positive for a change, I think we'll get a result on Saturday. I really think that they, they'll, want, they'll want the players. Predictions then, we'll go around. What, what do yeah. you think? Si? I think, I think I'll, I went for 2 0 against, um, I went for 2 0 against uh, MK Dons. I'll go for 2 0 against um, Wickham, personally. 2 0 or 2 1. But, you know what? I think it'll be a draw. I don't want it to be a draw, obviously. I want Wednesday to win. But I think, I think it's got 1 1 written all over it. And it's going to be really, and the Twitter's going to be an absolute cesspit. At five o'clock. Always it is. <laughs> Steve it. Um, I agree with Blair. Don't know what score it will be. It'll be uh, a last minute equaliser, breaking arts. Wickham will, 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 will get that last minute equaliser, and that's going to put paid to the automatic conversation. My worry around <laughs> that is um, we've, we, we've worked as bollocks off to get to where we are. You know what I mean? Everything's gone right for us. Um, there's a lot of positivity to be had. I've loved watching the, you know, the Toy Story gifts, memes, and, and videos, the clips about uh, we're not aiming for the the truck. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant, and I, I'm, I don't know if I've said on the chat, but I'm I'm, I'm just going to spend this week enjoying them because at five o'clock on Saturday, they're probably going to be redundant. As you know, it's important. It's important that we don't lose sight of the fact that we've gone above and beyond to get where we are, given. You know, that downturn that we had in October, November. Um, to be in the conversation with three games left is great. Uh, but realistically, and I can say this because fudging on the podcast tonight, realistically, our aim was the playoffs. If we can get the playoffs, um, you know, we get a point on Saturday. If we go to Fleetwood Tuesday night um, and get a win, that puts us in the playoffs. And then we regroup and we go again. Um, and then we start worrying about whether or not we've got to go to Sunderland, whether or not we've got to play MK Dons again, whether or not we've got to go and play Rotherham. It becomes a, a different type of headache, doesn't it? Who do you want the least 
in the playoffs over two legs. Well, for, I, me, I, for me, it's Plymouth. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be Dan Fudge and say it's not about playoffs. We've got to get top two. <laughs> but that's the thing. What happens when we don't? We talk about Twitter being a cesspit. What happens when we don't? If we go in there with all the negativity, I, I'd love top two. I want top two. You know, I agree with Blair. You know, the, 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 the Ipswich game, the two for me, the fact that we've only got two points against Lincoln and Shrewsbury, uh, uh, those points are the yeah. ones that, we've, that have killed us. You know, the, yeah. the Ipswich one was a bollock dropped. But over four games against two bang average or less than average sides in this league, we've picked up two points. And you'll look back at that game at New Year at, at Shrewsbury. Um, there's an outside argument that you could look back at, at the loss to Oxford, but that would have only been another point because it was late last minute. Um, for me, it's criminal that we've only picked two points up against Lincoln and Shrewsbury. Yeah, I'm going to go two one on Saturday, and they all for me. It all depends on other. As long as we keep doing our job, it all depends on other results. I don't think we are aiming for the truck. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think we're aiming for something else. Um, but that leads us on. I'll never, I'll, I'll, I would never Spe- be as happy to be wrong. Speaking of speaking of names. As a uh, Wednesday fan, it's about time the luck went for us, is it not? It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years, at least it has. It's... That moves us on, we'll talk briefly, because we don't. We can't really talk about it too much, but we'll probably play... I don't think we'll be doing another podcast before the Fleetwood game. Again, it's another must-win, really. Whether we <laughs> win, lose or draw against um, Wickham, if, if we win it, there's a chance that we're still going for automatics. If we draw it or lose it, then we need to be beating Fleetwood and... Oh, well, yeah. Well, like Stevie yeah. just said, Fleetwood's in the same bracket as Shrewsbury and Lincoln, aren't they? Like, we should, we've got to be... We've got to get three points off them, surely, haven't we? Your, your, your Fleetwood is a game that, you know, we, 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 we always do well against the top teams. <clears throat> we've taken, I think, is it 18 out of 24 points or something ridiculous like that? Six points off. Uh, MK on six points off Wigan, three points off Rotherham, three points off Plymouth, three points off Sunderland. I can't do mm-hmm. quick maths tonight. Um, we we do all right against the bottom sides. To be fair, <coughs> it's those teams at sort of sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth of the Fleetwood are that we're going to have problems with. I, I I think it all depends, doesn't it, on Saturday's result. It could it could go either way, couldn't it? If if we cement ourselves in the playoffs, but the but other results go against us to be able to get automatic. I think we'd say. Then, then no. do, do we put the does the foot come off the accelerator and, and we you know and we 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 start looking at resting players for the playoffs <laughs> or or does it go down the round that we we beat Wickham and we're in with shout still for automatic? It's, and it's, we've got it's to go. A big game, it's a big game for Fleetwood as well. Looking at this, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, because they, 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 between them and Gillingham, I think. To, for, for 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 relegation, so they've got yeah. they can't sit eleven behind the ball then. So they again. No, oh, yeah. I'm a great yeah. believer is what Steve says in regards to when when teams have got to play football against Wednesday. <laughs> there's no better team teams to be playing against for Wednesday because we can play our game then. Yeah, because in a sense, Morecambe are MK Dons this weekend, and they're three points above Fleetwood. But obviously, Fleetwood's got <laughs> a game in hand. The game against us. The, 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 there's so, a lot. There's a lot of Wednesday talking to a guy today at work. There's a lot of Wednesday going up who haven't got tickets, um, and they're going to sit in the home end on on uh, on Tuesday. That, 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 um, but that, I've that, also, that, but I've also, the I've also heard that if we do win, Wickham may actually give us more 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 seats, more tickets. So <laughs> I know you're going, Steve, aren't you? Yeah, I have Nick Tasha's ticket for the night. Yeah, I gave mine away because we went on holiday at half term and then they cancelled the game. So I haven't got my tickets. That's a fair old trick in it, Wickham. Well, no, Fleetwood. Well, we're going to Wickham. Are you going to Wickham, Ben? Yeah. 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 So, so this is a public announcement by the Wednesday week. If there are any if there are two or three tickets available, please do let us know for Fleetwood, because we could all do we well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if you've That's... got a spare one and needs me to drive you up there, I'm more than welcome to drive you up there. The other, the other, to, to go back the other way with it, just quickly, if, if we do get a result on Saturday and we do beat Wickham and we go there Tuesday night, depending on how other results go at both ends of the table, what an absolute bouncing atmosphere it's going to be. I know it's Fleetwood on a Tuesday night in, you know, business end of the season. 
Um, but I cannot, absolutely cannot wait. If we get, you're results, going. You're saying that because you, you're can't going. Wait. Can't wait. <laughs> it's, it's, it's up to Fleetwood what they do. They either give us more tickets and have a ground full of Wednesday, or they don't give us more tickets and have a ground full of Wednesday. So it's up yeah. to them. But it's up to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, 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 they've only got a, a, a certain amount of fans who are going to come, so they're going to have a, a number of seats that are empty. Which will be taken up from the even think, auction. I don't, I, I'm not sure they've even put them on sale. Have they? I don't. I don't think they dare put them on sale. From what I've heard. I, I, yeah, that's what I've heard as well. You can't buy them over the internet. So. Is that last home game of the season as well? Yeah, yeah, but they've given us a quite a small allocation, haven't they? About seventeen hundred, I think. Yeah, so there weren't many at all. Um, yeah, but yeah. That is about all we've got time for. We'll give you, I think, a good hour there. Uh, Steve, we've got a bit of any other business. We'll let Steve. Um, we've not planned this and we've not talked about it, but today's a very important day in the life of a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Um, if, you're over 20, if you're over fans, 21 years of age. <laughs> if, you're, if you're of a certain vintage. Um, and we told, we, you know, the, the last couple of years that I've been involved, we always sort of pay homage, if you like. Homage. 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 <laughs> Tribute to um, a, a very special day in our history, um, 1991 uh, League Cup final. Uh, the, the the videos, the clips have been doing the rounds. Um, ben, that's what it's like to win a cup, just to let you know. League Cup final, that's what it's like to go to Wembley and win something. Um, people Ben's age won't know what that's all about. Um, I was eight months old. <laughs> eight months old. Eight months old. <laughs> Christ, I was 20. I was 30. <laughs> Um, it, it, one of the one of the best days is a Wednesday. One of the best days of our lives. Um, just want to sort of tip our hats to, to to some very very special players that were there. Do you, do you remember the game at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where did you watch it? I was there. You was there. there. Oh. Yeah, I was there. Um, big. It was my first time at Wembley. Big concrete carcass. It was. Um, you can have all the romantic sort of. Memories and memorabilia, and you know, the, the it was dreadful, it, it was <laughs> awful, it was an absolute shithole. Was Wembley, he had um, port cabins inside for toilets, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and it, 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 yeah, but it was amazing, yeah. yeah. It, I, I remember, I remember sort of three sort of things. I remember going because we stayed up nights for Jerry, I was went with my mum and dad. And we got the tube in, and Man United fans were were basically asking us if we knew where Wembley was. My dad, who's no longer with us, he went to the 66 FA Cup final. So he was giving it all this. I remember I remember 66 and all that. And, and then getting there, and my dad, my dad was a big fella, and he had sunglasses on and this Mac, and everybody kept asking if he'd come dressed as Ron Atkinson. <laughs> uh, we stood on Wembley Way. And then the goal, all like again, everybody talks about dink, and I remember hearing that dink, and you hear it even more. There's been a lot of replays today on Twitter, and and and, and that dink stands out. But you did actually hear it echo around the stadium. And then the second half seemed to be about two hours long, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it felt like two hours. Yeah, it went and it went. And then the two. Yeah, the tube back was the most silent tube I've ever been on because we were sat there going, my God, we've just won a cup. And Man United fans were going, my God, a second division team have just beat me. <laughs> yeah. And we still are the only team yep. to win a trophy from a league below. So, and I don't think we'll, that will ever be surpassed. I don't think that oh, not will, now. will ever not now. change. Yeah. No, no chance now. Yeah. Time's gone, I think, for that. It, it, it was an amazing day. It was brilliant. And if you read um, Alex's book, 91, it is absolutely superb. I recommend anybody, even those who of an age who weren't even born then, you know, read it because it is absolutely superb. It is brilliant. The camaraderie. That's the book. Alex Miller's book. I'm showing it like we're going to be recording this. And we're yeah. Not. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and it, Alex Miller's book is just absolutely super from start to finish. That whole season of 91 and, and the players. And, and I was lucky enough to go to a dinner a, a, a few weeks ago. John Sheridan was a speaker. And, and the stories he tells you about Ron Atkinson, how he managed the side. And I don't think we'll ever have a side in my lifetime, as good as that. 
Yeah, because I watched I watched the highlights today, and the, you know, I mean, the commentators saying like there's five internationals in the Wednesday team, so it's not like it's, it's not even though it's a second division team, it's not. You know what I mean, don't take them lightly. It's like so Carabao you, Cup you, video. You'd ne- where... yeah. yeah, you'd never have five internationals in your second division team these days. You you, you have the likes of, of Roland Nielsen, who who God knows what he'd have been worth in today's market. You know, David Hurst. Um, an unsung hero up front of Paul Williams, you know, he, so underrated, superb player. Nigel Worthington, Phil King, everybody takes the pee out of Phil King. He was a great footballer. You know, it, it, it was just a combination of a team that then went on that could have probably won the old first division by, you know, we nearly won it. I think it was three points off winning it. Mm. And then we could have probably gone on. If Ron had stayed, we would have won the league without a doubt. Without a doubt, we would have won the league, but unfortunately, he went to Villa. The year, the year after coming up, by the way, we'd have won the, we'd have, we'd have won the league cup in the second tier, and then gone yeah. up and likely won the league the year. Won the after. league, and instead, um, Leeds won it. It was, but what I really why did, it, why did it go to Villa? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can broadcast that. <laughs> Reasons, <laughs> <laughs> because that was the club he always wanted to manage. Oh, hmm. right. but they were they were the first. First game of the season when we came up was Villa. Yeah, wasn't it? and they, yeah. they beat us, didn't they? Didn't they uh, three, three, two, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, you got some ammo. Um, <laughs> just, <laughs> um, just watching the the, the the clip that Blair was talking about, and what struck me was um, you get to full time, and we talk a lot about modern day football, and now you know, who was it? Somebody called Man United the other night after the Liverpool game, Instagram United, and it just made let me realise how superficial, now that there's so much money in the game, mm. how superficial it is. You watch Nigel Pearson's reaction. If you've seen the uh, the, the, the Carabao uh, Cup Twitter handle, I think it is, or something like that, shows mm. you six yeah, footage. You watch Nigel Pearson at the full time, he's, at full time, he's in absolute tears. Yeah. The announcer is man of the match and he breaks down. He was absolutely... You know, the emotion there was, you know, is something that you, you're just not going to get now. Yeah, it's like with the Klopp and Pep, like, shaking hands after that game of a week and you think, oh, piss off. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I, know, I, know, I know what you're saying about it. Because I, I, I love, the, I, I don't, well, I don't like the Premier League, but I watch it because I love football. So it's like I'm part of the problem, if you know what I mean. Because I, I agree with you. Like, I kind of like being in the lower leagues. I think it's proper football and, you, and, you, and you're more connected to your club. You, you know what's going on in your club. And I love meeting fans with other teams because they can tell you what's going on in their club, but you don't know. But we all know everything about what's going on in every club in the Premier League because it's just, con- well, especially in the top six. Because that's all, what, that's all what TalkSport talk about. It's all what BBC talk about. It's all what Sky Sports talk about. They talk about these clubs like Sheffield Wednesday don't matter, Fleetwood don't matter, Cambridge don't matter, Sheffield United doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? And unless you're Derby uh, County, obviously. Oh, yeah, unless you're, oh my God, don't get me started. <laughs> You've only the fanity buzzer then. <laughs> Christ. But, and, so it's like, I, I want Wednesday in the Premier League, but at the same time, it's like, after finishing 14th for four years, will, you, will, will it get boring? I don't know. Whereas, at least in the Championship, the, the, the allure of the playoffs is always something to look forward to. I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? I, I, it's catch too. Yeah. I, I think now I want us to go up, but I'm now more bothered about us not going back down to League One again rather than getting to the Premier League. We, we had we had three, probably four or five years of being three or four years of being so transfixed on trying to get to the Premier League that we probably stopped enjoying it for what it was. I, I probably did anyway. I think the <clears throat> sort of that constant constant race to try and get in the Premier League. Anyway, we've gone on for a fair while now. So, as Stevie said, go and watch Nigel Pearson's reaction. I'd love to see Barry Bannon's reaction at Wembley, but we're not aiming for the truck. 